WordPress just released version 6.9. And if you blink, you'll miss the best productivity feature that could change how you manage your sites. Now, there are dozens of under the hood improvements that the average user won't even notice, but I'm cutting through the noise. Today, I'm showing you the 12 most visible features that may speed up your workflow and maybe make your sites better. So, let's dive in. The first big update WordPress 6.9 has is by far my favorite one, and it's a command palette. Use your keyboard and you press Command K on Mac or Control K on Windows. This command palette opens up and now you can access it from any part of your site. Previously you couldn't do that, but now you can do. And what's even more awesome is that you can go everywhere from here. For example, let's start typing settings. Let's go to the settings of permalinks. Done. When I go to the posts or pages or whatever post type it is, when I open it up, I tend to use the full screen option. You can also access it here. But as I said, you can also use your keyboard. Let's add a new product. Do whatever you want here. If you click inside the blocks and use the command palette, then as you see, you can duplicate blocks, add before, add after, group, delete, or hide the blocks. So you can do everything here. And I think it's the most useful update in a long time. For example, usually I tend to test all sorts of stuff. I use a full screen in order to go to the plugins. I have to exit it. Then I have to go to the plugins. And now I'm here. But with the new version, I'm going to just go to the plugins, whether to install a plugin, add the plugin, or I can even open up the plugin file editor. If I need to go to the customizer, then appearance, customize, boom, and done. So this is a command palette here. Next update is related to the blocks and that is you can hide blocks. Let's click on the block and as I showed you with the command palette there is an option to hide the block. You can do it here or you can click on these three dots here and hide it here. Now when is this useful? Let's add something here. For example I'm gonna add a container and let's imagine that I'm testing something here that I don't want to be shown on the front end. At the moment when I save it and open up my post, you'll see the image is here, but I don't want to show it. Therefore, I want to test it, but I have to leave the work. So I'm going to hide it. It's hidden. As you see, when I save and refresh, there is no container with the image here. But when I need to access it, then I'm going to open up this list view. You'll see there is my container. I'm going to open it up and show it. Done. So this is an option to hide blocks. Next new feature in WordPress 6.9 is an option to add notes. Let's click on this three dots icon here. Add a note. It appears here. Let's add a note. Add it here. And you'll see there's my note. If I need to add something, I can do it here. And if I need to edit it, I can also do it here or delete it. Now pay attention that these notes are displayed here. When I open up the block view, they are hidden. If you want to see the notes, there is a new icon here. Click and it's here. In order to figure out what are the notes about, click on the note and you'll see that it's highlighted and you'll see that this note is regarding this block here. If I need to add another note for this block, then let's do it. Add a note, done, and it's here. This way you can see what is what, and it's useful if you are collaborating with someone on the pages or posts. And as I mentioned, if you need to delete it, then just click on the three dots and delete. Next one is a new block called accordion. So let's add an accordion block. There it is. Give it the title, for example, FAQ. You'll see there is an accordion item and when you click here, there is an accordion heading and now you can add here whatever you would like to add. For example, I can add even third party blocks. Let's add a container here. Another one if needed. Or you can delete it. At the moment, I'm gonna add a random text inside it. If you need to add another one, then select the accordion item and Add another one after that. Let's do FAQ1. Add something here. Let's make it bold. 
and so on and so forth. Now, when I select the accordion itself and open up the settings, you'll see there are some options. First one is that you can activate that inner blocks use content width. You can auto close the accordion. I'm going to do that. And you can show the icon whether it's on the right or on the left. Here are some customization options as always. Now, when I save it and refresh my page, you'll see there's the accordion. You can open it up like this. Now, another cool trick you can do is you can link to the specific accordion item. So, how does it work? I'm going to drag it somewhere here. I'm going to open up the accordion heading under the advanced. I'm going to add HTML anchor FAQ. And for the second one, I'm going to add HTML anchor FAQ1. So, let's save it. Let's refresh it. Now I'm going to modify the URL. Let's add FAQ here and it scrolls down below here. When I add FAQ1, it's going to scroll here. So you can link to the specific accordion item. And this concludes the part about the accordion block. Next, I'm going to add a new block called terms query. This one here. You can choose whether to display only the term names or Display term names and number of posts assigned to each item. Let's select this one. And it's a brand new block. From the sidebar, you can select the taxonomy, whether it's categories, brands, or whatever taxonomies you have here. I'm going to select the product categories, and you'll see it displays three categories. Next, I can show only nested terms. I can show the empty terms if needed. I'm not going to do that. And this one here is a maximum number of terms you can display. This update is something that I'm not sure is very useful to me, but maybe it's useful for some of you over there. Okay, I'm going to delete this block and I'm going to display the next new block. And this time it's called math block. It does only one thing and it's you can add equations here. For example, A plus B equals C and you'll see it is displayed here like this. For some reason, I cannot customize it. I don't know why. It would be nice to have an option to customize it. Size, typography, and so on. It's another update that I'm not sure it's very useful to most of us, but most likely there is a need for this block for some of you. Next one is another new block. I'm going to add it on top here, and the block is called time to read. As you see, it displays time range. You can deactivate it and it displays only time. And there is another option to display how many words are added to this post. So if you save it, refresh the page, you'll see it's up here. And there are some customization options for this block under this icon here. Okay, I'm going to delete it and move to another feature. This time I'm going to add an info box here. Also, I'm going to add an image here. Let's add a random image. So what happens here in the previous WordPress versions, you could drag and drop blocks using this handle here. WordPress 6.9 allows you to drag and drop blocks just by grabbing those and dragging in a place you want. Just grab and drag it here. Now, the weird thing is that it doesn't seem to work with every block. For example, for this paragraph block, it doesn't work. I still need to use this handle. But if I use a container block, I'm going to add it here. Then it works for this container block. Or let's add a group block here. Let's and see whether it works with a group block. So it works also with a group block, but it doesn't work with a paragraph block. And it also doesn't work with a heading block. You need to use this handle. So somewhat useful feature and makes some things easier, but it may confuse some of you because it works with some blocks and not with other ones. Okay, next one is another new block and it's called a stretchy heading. As you see, if I add something here, for example, hello there, then it stretches this and it uses all the width of this area. If I add something else here, you'll see it just keeps getting smaller. 
when I delete it, then it's bigger. When I add a container here and two columns, when I drag this one here, it takes all the area of this container. When I make the container bigger, for example, 80% and this one 20%, then it stretches here. There is another new block, it's called stretchy paragraph, which basically does the same thing. So I'll just keep typing and you'll see it. it just stretches and stretches and stretches and goes and goes and goes. Okay, I'm gonna delete it and I'm gonna show you another feature. This time it's a small improvement for the gallery block. What happens here is I'm gonna add these images to the gallery, insert it here. And now what's new is that if you select the gallery, you can select the aspect ratio. For example, let's select tall or classic portrait or 16 by nine wide. You'll see it happens here. Previously it didn't add this option, but this is a small improvement. Now, what else is new with the gallery block? If you open it up and click here, you can link it to enlarge the images on click. It's a so and so feature because it doesn't work like an actual gallery. As you see, when I click here, there is a no navigation arrows here. So I have to close it and one by one open up every image. It's a small enhancement, but it goes only half of the way. I would like to see it work as a normal gallery with a navigation arrows. But nevertheless, better than nothing. Okay, almost there. Two features to cover and first of those is related to the cover block. It's another small enhancement. I'm gonna add a video here. And previously you didn't have an option to add the poster image for this block. Now when I select it, you'll see there is a poster image option. Let's add it here. And why is this useful is if for some reason the video won't start, then it will display the poster image. I don't use this feature, but I'm sure it's useful for some of you. Okay, and last one to go. This time I'm gonna add a group block, this one here. Let's add something inside this block, for example, a heading. Hello, it's me. Next, let's add this paragraph inside this one here. And now what happens is if I select this group and open up the advanced, scroll down, you'll see there is a option manage allowed blocks. That is, I can say what blocks I will allow you to add inside this group. If I don't want you to add any spectra related blocks or these extensions or maybe any WooCommerce related product elements, then I'm gonna apply and you'll see that when I search for info box, that is this block from the spectra, then it's not displayed here and I can't add it. Now you may think, okay, what happens when you add the info block on the page and drag it inside the group? You'll see it's not possible. I can't do that. When I try to add it here, it's not working. I don't know whether this manage allowed blocks feature is really useful because I have never used the group blocks. And even if I would use it, I'm not sure whether I would want to manage any allowed blocks here, but you never know. And there you have it. 12 new features in WordPress 6.9 that for some of you make a difference in how you build sites. As you saw, some of those were subtle, some were noteworthy, but all of them are worth exploring. My favorite one was the command palette, but now I'm curious, which new feature from the WordPress 6.9 do you like the most? Drop it in the comments below and I read every single one. I'd love to know which update excites you the most. If this video helped you stay ahead of the WordPress curve, smash that like button down below and subscribe for more WordPress tips that actually work. I'll see you in the next one.